Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting an Anand Gilfand rest day video to cheer you all up a bit. Because I think we can agree that the first six games in the World Championship match has been disappointing. In modern chess, players are extremely well prepared and that takes some of the fun out of the game in my opinion. So, on this rest day, I have a beautiful game for you. So please enjoy Paul Morphy at the age of 13 playing against his, I'm not sure if it's, if it's uh, his uncle or his father, but he plays Ernest Morphy all the way back in 1850 in New Orleans. And Paul Morphy is white and his uncle or dad is black and we are having an even scampit, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, b4. And the idea of this even scampit is to deflect the bishop from d4. White then plays c3, d4, creating a lot of open lines and files for his pieces. And Paul Morphy was in fact one of the experts in this gambit in these early days of chess. Bishop takes b4, c3, bishop a5, d4, e takes d, castles. And now bishop takes c3 is perhaps not the most accurate continuation, but knight takes, d takes, and with bishop a3, we have this standard move in even scampit designed to prevent black from castling and therefore d6 is almost forced and queen b3 another idea in the even scampit exerting pressure on the weak point uh, f7 knight h6 was played for black to defend f7 and paul morphy picks up the pawn and attacks g7 and although he has sacked two pawns White's initiative is very dangerous and here the best continuation for black could be to castle here. It has been tried. Rook a d1, knight g4, h3, knight g e5, knight takes, knight takes. This has been tried and should be okay for black. In the game, uh, queen f6 was played and with e5 here, Paul Morphy sacks a third pawn and now after d takes e5, now black cannot castle kingside because of this bishop on a3. So this was why he is he sacked a third pawn and now he can play rook f to e1. And bishop d7 from black and three pawns down, but after the next move, all the white pieces are actively participating in the strong pressure on the black position. Rook a to b1. And Black castles queenside since he was not able to castle kingside, but in this position, Paul Morphy uh, saw a little trick, uh, and he was a great tactician. And already at the young age of 13, as in this game, he shows that he doesn't miss a tactical shot when the chance is there. So, what came here was Bishop a6, and over the board, it's not easy to defend against such moves. What happens if black accepts the bishop? Well, first of all, queen b2 will be played, threatening queen b7 checkmate. Uh, bishop g4 to give an escape route for, for the black king. Queen b7 check, king d7. Rook b d1 check, king e8. And, for example, queen takes c7. This looks quite scary for black, but um, and after rook takes d1, uh, rook takes queen e6, rook d6, this is not looking very pleasant for, for, for black. But he has another resource. He might have tried bishop takes f3, g takes, rook takes, rook takes, and knight d4. And perhaps this is the best defense, but of course very difficult to find over the board. So that's some of the lines. There are many lines, but this is probably why uh, black didn't take the bishop. He tried the clever knight a5 instead, <coughs> hoping for queen takes, because then he can play queen takes a6. But Morphy saw this and played rook ec1 instead, and this is adding immense pressure on the black king. And now the knight on a5 is in trouble. He could try knight c6 here, but then bishop takes b7 would lead to a quick checkmate. And if he tries queen c6 instead, 
Then Morphe can take on uh, a5. And after bishop, uh, sorry, b takes a6, there's this fantastic move, bishop d6. And all the white pieces are attacking the black king, and uh, there's no uh, escape from a mate on the c7 or b7. C takes, queen takes, king c7, queen b7 is a beautiful checkmate. So also queen c6 doesn't work. So bishop c6 was the move uh, tried by black. And then queen takes a5, b takes a6, queen takes, king d7. And now came uh, rook takes c6. Because um, queen takes c6 doesn't work because of knight takes e5 check with the fork on the king and the queen. So queen f5 followed instead. And then Morphy uh, who has sacked already a lot of uh, pieces and pawns, plays rook takes c7. <coughs> King e8, queen c6 check, queen d7. And now the quickest way to a mate for Morphy was rook d7. But rook b8 is actually more beautiful because now queen takes c6, rook e7 check king f8, rook takes d8, queen e8, and rook d to e8, checkmate. That is a beautiful checkmate. And this is how the 13-year-old Paul Morphy demolished his uncle or his dad, I'm not sure, in New Orleans in 1850. And thanks for watching this video. And please enjoy your rest day. And if you want more chess, just go to my website at klausjensen.com. See you all tomorrow for Game 7 of the Anand Gelfand World Championship match. Bye bye for now.